All right, we're live now. Sweet. All right. So we got we got Shears on a plane. Me. No, I'm, dri I'm driving. Driving. Uh, he's he's driving. But he's driving up. He's driving a plane. He's driving a plane. So we have Shears on a plane. Me, Robert, and Dark Horse to talk about um this week's rankings that came out today. Now the first thing I just want to say about the rankings, like when I initially looked at it. I went, you gotta be kidding me, like no way. I didn't, I didn't predict this at all. But then like I gave it like an hour and I sat and I sat and thought about it. I'm like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. I'm glad you approve. <laughs> yeah, I um, you know, when I first thought, going into this, I first thought, okay, you know, these things are gonna be a total crapshoot. Because I saw some of the names of the people who were like doing the, the ballots and I was like, I don't trust their opinions. Uh, but then we kind of like, you know, Jim Jar put it all together and averaged it all. And I think after looking at it in the average, while it's not like exactly something I'd agree with, I don't really find any of it like obscenely wrong. Like unless you want to get into like some kind of, uh, you know, argument about whether the Japanese should be in there or whether South America should be in there or whatever, right? That's like a separate argument entirely. If you, could, if you consider all of the people on the ballot being totally eligible for the rankings, I don't think there's that much wrong with what happened. And yeah, there's some people you people have wanted to now, see in the top quick, four. Like, quick I, thing, I wanted Dave, dogs in there. What was that? Quick, quick thing. Uh, just make sure we try not to mention any names that haven't been released yet. Yeah. Of, course, of course, of course, of course. Keep in mind, only the bottom ten have been released. Yeah, I already, I already know that. I already know that. Okay. So, uh, just don't want to slip. So, for, so like, some people like look at this, and I, and I look at it, right? And I, I really thought dogs was top 64. Like, I had him. I thought he was a lock for top 64. Yeah, I did too. Um, but uh, you, you look at, like, who, who made it in. So, like, the honorable mention, he got in there, and, and it seems like a disappointment. But when you look at it really closely, you know, people have their opinions. Like, I had my opinions on who was that top 64 and who was just out, and other people have their opinions. But, like, no matter what your opinion is, it's not like your score for the guy who got 60th is, like, just clear-cut better than the guy who got 65th. Yeah, like, no. in any way, shape, or form, you can look at it in some small, different perspective and see that somebody switched it around. And that's kind of how it played out. So it, while it may not be perfect, I, I think I'm, I'm generally satisfied with the group of people that got into that range. Yeah, I yeah. agree. That's, like, how I viewed it. Sorry. That's how I viewed it at first. Like, I looked at it, I'm like, there's no way I'm worse than Mad Rush. But then I thought about it, and I looked at it, like, considerably, like, based on my console results. And it's not, like, the people who, who's, like, above you, it's not saying, like, you'll lose to that person. It actually means, like, if you're paired within, like, the tier, you can also look at, like, it as a tier. It's like, if you're paired yeah. within that ranking... Everyone has a chance to be everyone in that ranking. Yeah, well, I mean, if you, you know, if you filled out your ballot in an efficient way, that's how you started it. You split people into tiers. Yeah, so like, that's exactly what I did. My process so was like, tiered. For me, really. my bottom 10, actually, my bottom 12 were all in the same tier on my ballot. And it did include Dogs Johnson. I had him at 60, so I had him in. Dark Horse, you actually filled out a ballot? I filled that. I filled it out. I was done like eight hours after I got it. Wow! Wow! Overachiever. It's I so. Thought, I thought you were gonna say eight hours before it was due. No, no. I t I think I tweaked it maybe like the day before it was due, but I for the most part filled it out like immediately. Um, if you did the tier strategy, it was super easy. I I didn't do that. I kind of just like I tried because I got. I got help from Low because like Jam Jar was um, was looking for people, and then I looked at it, and I thought I was like, and we look, I looked at four different ballots, right? And we all were, were mostly in agreement for the most part. There was some switches here and there, and then to see it like how it was just really surprised me at first. But like, like I said, I think so, it made sense. So I had six. So I had 62 out of the 64 people. I did, you know, I had dogs on mine. He didn't get in. Um, I won't say the other ones, but I think one thing that counted for a lot of differences with people is um, how they, if they looked at results that weren't on the ballot. Yeah. Because we, we like, we agreed and we said in like the Facebook group that regional results could be looked at. And I think a lot of people just ignored it. And that's why um, dogs didn't make it. And so uh, one player, one player that I, I don't know if everyone else, I guess everyone else probably did have him on their top 64, but I didn't have him on mine. Was uh, was actually Mad Rush. Um, so I looked at his body of work, and 
he didn't, other than the one win over Lord Narwhal, and I think he beat Dark Horse's DK or something. No, he uh, beat me and Falcon did us. No, okay, did he? Okay. Um, but what total was that, one. though? It was like... He also beat Canada, Okay, yeah, so a lot think. of your results, a lot of your results at Let's Go, I kind of, like, don't really hold too much weight to, and, and most of that has to do with the fact that you barely were even playing, and the entire time... You're, you're basically working on, uh, you know, the stream, and you never got a chance to get up from it. Like, Let's Go is a, an event where you were very, very busy, and I just feel yeah. like... And you also I don't, like, you, I don't make no that excuse very weekend. often, but that tournament was brutal for us. Yeah, so, like, like and you, didn't, I, you didn't get any sleep either. So, I, I don't really like to... I don't want to discredit Mad Rush's win there, but, you know, for me, the, the real win for him there was Lord Narwhal, which I think is a really yeah, good win. Yeah, that was legit. Yeah, Narwhal's been outstanding. Um... But uh, but the difference was like, you look at his other events, right? He has some pretty bad losses. I think uh, he lost to um, uh, Andykins a couple, or no, he didn't lose Andykins. He lost to um, uh, Nintendo a couple times. Yeah, he lost, um, he lost twice. to I think he lost to Purple Circle at SmashCon. He did. Um, I was commentating that. So also like Purple Circle, he lost to uh, who isn't? I mean, he's not bad, but Purple Circle wasn't. He's not a ballot guy yet. I mean, I think uh, he has been beer, beer not there yet. He, he lost to D thirty five and Bard, who are just like yeah. So, so, yeah, so Mad Rush has some not. questionable losses. Uh, he lost to me at Shine, which I guess I'm going to be on the rankings. But I don't know how anyone loses to you, but yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah. So he has <laughs> he has some of these like uh, he has some losses where it's not that they're, like they're t terrible losses, but they're losses that I I those kind of losses I those, you know player with those losses disqualified them from my top sixty four list. And he had those losses, so I just couldn't put him into my top 64. Um, right. I didn't, and I, think... I, I, had him, I, I think I had him in my top 70, but I didn't have him in my top 64. So I was really surprised that a lot of people, I think, so in my opinion, I think he's an example of somebody with a name that had really good doubles results. Um, so he's got a really good name, he's got a really good double results, and he has a signature win. And I think people looked at those three criteria and, and put him into their top 64, but ignored all of his other failures. Yeah, I feel like most people, people, look at people, people... If you look at the people that are ranked around them, a lot of them, like, their losses aren't that bad, but their wins are just kind of, like, they're pretty middling. Yeah, Whereas right. Mad Rush had multiple... He also beat Janitor. I don't think that was mentioned. He, yeah, he, had, he like, did beat multiple Janitor. pretty impressive wins and a ton of bad losses, but... But I think people looked at the looked at the wins and, and maybe that stood people out. People definitely look at wins more than losses. Mediocre wins. Yeah, I think people definitely value the wins more. And most people did not look at wins and losses subjectively like Dave did with like his victory over me, or like you know someone, or like uh, you know like Finio beating Star King. Yeah. Like people will just see no, that. No, no, that. That was actually like Starking's only loss that was legitimate at Keystone. <laughs> um, oh. I, I do want to say though, um, I have the setup where I have slides for like every player, so I want people to yeah. refrain from talking about too much in depth with them because it's just gonna go through them all. All right, it's, just keep us on topic. Yep, yep. Uh, are we getting um, through in, in order? Let's then? let's let's start with number sixty-four right now. So let all me, right, I'm gonna let me, keep I'm gonna keep the stream up so I can follow it. But I'm yeah, just the uh, magical button. And here you go. We have number 64, CVG. Um, his only... I didn't put like his main or anything like that, so if you want to explain more details about that, this is just mostly like, you know, something for people to look at, so All right. go ahead. Alright, so Stevie G was one of the two people I did not have in my top 64. Um, he played mostly Fox and Kirby all year, as far as I know. And he really didn't have any wins at SmashCon, and he lost to Lorenzo. But he beat, at Keystone, he beat Star King, Master Handjob, Mr. Sir, Mr. Sir twice, and Finio. Like, he beat all those people. And then he also beat KD3 at a um, another Smash, Pennsylvania. Smash Valley. Smash, Smash Valley, Valley. Is a, which is a Pennsylvania regional. So, like, he had some wins. They just weren't at SmashCon. Um... And then he really didn't go to anything else. Um, I, I forget how he did at MVP Moms. He did pretty decent. Yeah, I know. At MVP Moms, he had he had some good wins. He beat like, well, he beat all he beat all Moms, uh, and then he beat most of MB, uh, MVP that he faced against. That's how he made top eight. Oh, that's right. He made I forgot he made top eight. So yeah, he like his results were just pretty you know pretty solid for the bottom of the rankings they were just outside of the one major he went to 
Like I'm, I refrain from calling Keystone a major. It was more like a, like a top tier regional. Yeah, that makes. Sense. Um, it just it didn't have enough um, out of region talent to, for me to consider it a major. Um, you know they like flew in Boom and NTA, but meh. yeah, it was a great. I mean, it's a great I tournament. Mean, having Boom there doesn't instantly make your thing a major. I mean, exactly. We've had Boom you, that you need out. more. You need more out of region talent. Um, but regardless, like. I just didn't think he had enough to make it in. Um, he was kind of—he wasn't even really that much on the bubble for me. I had him below, kind of a lot of people. Yeah, my my uh, 70s. yeah my ballot. I don't think I even had him in. I had him at like three point seven compared. Like the spot that Stevie G's and I had dogs in, and I really and I really stand by that still. But I understand why Stevie G is here. And I don't have experience like playing Stevie G, so I can't talk much about how good he is or how relative it is to like dog's skill. But perhaps maybe he's Robert pretty could he pretty good? Yeah, yeah. I, I've played. I feel CBG's like he adapts Kirby better. I, I think his Kirby is actually uh, quite good. His Fox is kind of it's Fox. You just throw him, but yeah, his Kirby, his yeah, Kirby's Kirby's not bad. Bad. He had him as Kirby, but his Kirby got four stocked by Rocket's Falcon at MVP month. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I forgot Rocket. Then he, then, then, he, then he switched to Fox. Then he, then Stevie G switched to Fox for game two and four stocks Rocket's Falcon. <laughs> so maybe uh, maybe he uh, maybe he focuses on different matchups with the TK. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. That's he, super possible. He's definitely decent, and I think his skill level is not at least not much worse than than Dogs. When I've played Dogs, uh, it's been in. Situations where he wasn't playing that great, so I didn't. Yeah, I only played him one time. I destroyed him. I, I played, I played both those guys actually quite a bit. Um, I played CBG at Keystone actually in tournament, and um, I had CBG in my top 64. I actually had him. Uh, I actually had him just a spot above Dogs Johnson on my ballot. I had him at 60th, and I had or 59th, and I had uh, Dog Johnson at 60th. Wow. Um, so in my opinion, they're both very similar. I played these guys a lot. Uh, Stevie G's never really taken like a serious set off me. Uh, Dogs uh, beat me in a serious money match at uh, Smash and Splash. So while I, I that would like sound like I'd put Dogs ahead of him, I think at the body of work, Dogs' best win was Hydro, which was a solid win. Uh, but I think Stevie G has had more consistent wins at the top. So his worst loss, like what's Stevie G's worst loss? Uh, Lorenzo? I, 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 can that, I can check for Lorenzo. Yeah, you I'm looking at her right now. Okay, but, it's, but, but if you look at it, like, you know, considering Lorenzo, didn't Lorenzo make this rankings? He did. He was in this, he's in this group, right? Yeah. So, so oh, sorry, like sorry, 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 sorry. Um, looking at Keystone, Stevie G lost to Blood Peach. Yeah, he v. lost to V. Like, that, that's definitely the yeah, I, Oh, he lost to, okay, I guess I overlooked that one. Like, um, people so just, yeah, people forgot you. about Keystone. Yeah, I guess, I guess my, my, uh, my method wasn't totally, like, uh, even, because I, I guess I applied to Stevie G the quality of some of his wins. And, I, and I, I didn't really notice he had that V loss, I guess. Um, that was I saw why that I beat... ranked him so low, actually. Okay. So I saw that he beat Finio. I saw that he beat uh, uh, Mr. Sir. I saw that he beat... Star King. Um, MHJ. Star King one was, uh, was kind of a question one. But, but he's beaten Mr. Sir. He's beaten Finio. He's beaten KD3. Uh, he played a really close set with me at, at Keystone. Um, he, I think he's, he, had a, he had a couple decent other wins uh, somewhere else. I think like MVP Moms, I think he beat MHJ maybe. Uh, I think he, I think he's had some pretty solid wins. And, and in my mind, like he hasn't had to done anything poorly. So I guess I, the V1, I guess I threw that away. I didn't think of that. Um, but other than the Lorenzo missed that tag. It's only one letter. I, I, yeah, want, so I want to just like, like let everyone know, like everyone on this list deserves it. Like, honestly, there's like no... It's like no really. Oh, this guy's bad. Like everyone on this list is competent, and you, if you if you course, made it, you should feel like you did a good job in 2017. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like honestly, just to make so there's a couple names in the ballot that I thought were kind of ridiculous to be there, but for the most part, the entire ballot, which not everyone gets to see, there's 100 people that get on the ballot, only 64 or 68 of them, including honor mentions, even get like recognized. And there's a there's a lot of players. So like after you get outside of like 50 or even like 55. Uh, the next like 20 names are all have like very strong cases to argue themselves into the top 64 and only like, you know, 15 or 12 of them even make it on or something. Right. So or like nine of them make it on. Right. So I still, I still really think that, uh, people, if they want to get picky about the numbers, they're, they're looking at it wrong. They should look at like, 
the range, right? And anybody who thinks they are Stevie G range, anyone who thinks they are Dog Johnson range, should be motivated because they know that if these guys can get into that discussion or even on the list, then the, then everyone else out there can get into that discussion on the list. And uh, I do think though Stevie G is a lot more talented than his results show. Uh, I think that might have given me. I haven't had some bias on Stevie G maybe because uh, I know the player, but um, I, I think I think his rank right now is good, and I and I agree with it. I do think though in 2018. He's going to move up. He's oh, a guy yeah. that I he, think... Yeah, he's, I, old, he's, he's not going to go anywhere if he doesn't attend more stuff. Yeah, but I think he's finishing up school, isn't he? I don't know. All right, so <laughs> let's move on from Stevie G, and let's move on to our number 63 player, who I know pretty well, so I'll talk a good amount with him, and that would be SKG, who is known as a prominent online warrior, as we dub it. Um, he's a he's a Pikachu Kirby main, but sometimes he plays like Luigi. The thing I have to say about SKG is that in all of knowing him and playing him is that he is the most he just plays in a shield a lot and like he's not the type of person I'm not gonna say that like he he's calculated, but it's like he's so safe in everything he does that it's almost annoying. Like I was playing him the other day, right? And he would play in his shield like almost half the match and he would wait for me to attack his shield and then like counteract it and it's just like he just plays this this, this micro game and um i was really surprised he made 6-3 because i've also played him on console he's not as strong but there <laughs> nick or robert has a joke that you know console people think skg is better than he is and let's not i don't like get it wrong like skg is good but i don't think he's as good and he doesn't have the, the same the same minute like the same similarities that i see from him especially in console so yeah, that's all i have to say about skg i was pretty amazed he made the list just because i've forgotten that he actually attended a tournament i remember he, went to he, two. he was um, gonna go to let's go and then he just didn't appear like like on the day of i think so this uh this graphic is missing well it's not missing it was chosen to not include um his seventh place finish at ceo dreamland so he did go there also oh okay okay um so and SKG, battle, for okay, me, yeah. skg for me was a really hard one to rank and at first i like totally so when i went through my rankings i kind of just tiered everybody as dark horse said that was his strategy that was my strategy as well i put everyone into tiers and i micro seeded within tiers and when I first went through it, I, because of certain results for SKG, I immediately had him in like a not top 64 tier. And then I started going through him. So I was like, you know, this guy, it's not because I played him. I mean, I did play him at Hitstun in friendlies. I didn't play him in tournament. Um, but I'll get that to that, to that later. But I went through his and I immediately like ran him off. And then I was going through everything. And I said, okay, I'm going to revisit all the people that I off my list. And some of them, SKG, me, one of them, I started looking at it and, and this is a guy that I probably Cheers, are you in a tunnel? Ranked, like, no, I'm on a bridge. So it's like, it's those links or something, right? Yeah, we're um, yeah, yeah. you were cutting so, out just for a minute. Um, okay, so with SKB, he's a guy that I, that I really ranked like a lot of times. Like, I moved around so much, it was still for me to get a really good answer on him. I just ended up pitching with him in my top 64. But he has some, like, Really bad results. If you look at his boss battle, is really weird. Like he has some bad losses, but some good wins. Uh, which was, uh, you know, some people like to think it's not that strong of a win. But if you look at Nintendo's body of work, I thought I actually think he might be a little bit underranked because um, he doesn't really have anything bad on his on his list. Uh, but um, SKG was weird for me. You know, he's got some losses you wouldn't expect from a guy like him, and then he's got some wins that you know kind of earn that spot. Yeah. So. I feel like 2018, if he starts coming to more stuff, he's going to earn more of a valid spot uh, yeah. for him. But if people didn't include him in, in his top 64, I could totally see that. But then for people that did, I don't really think it's an argument for much better than what he is seated for yet. But I played him a hit stun, and he, uh, I was, you know, drinking, but I don't want to, you know, I, I was trying, trying in it. And he beat me pretty badly in a 12 CB. Uh, and then we played friendlies, and I don't think I want a single friendly versus him. So... He was a guy that really impressed me, but he doesn't have the results in tournament. And I don't know if yeah. that's something he has to adjust because going from online to, to, to console, if, that, if maybe it's a tournament nerves thing, because I guess the online tournaments never really have that kind of, you know, kind of stage presence that no, you get with the, with the console event. You're just like, so in your I room. think that's what he's missing. But when you play the guy in friendlies, and you, and you, or you, I guess if you play, I've never played him online, but, you know, you can see some of his online results. But when you play him in friendlies, he just looks so much stronger than he looks in tournament. And, uh, He's a, he's a, it was a strange spot for me, um, and I, I kind of think it's good that he got it on the rankings. I think it's going to 
help motivate him to come out or he's like a really friendly really nice guy uh might have probably should have been sports player of the year instead of bark but uh just kidding about that but um yeah, he's think, crazy think, nice. I, he's one I of the nicest have, players. I think he was really strong 2018. Corby should have won that. He was robbed. Oh, he's a yeah, guy yeah. that I think is tremendous, tremendously underranked, but not because his results didn't earn him. I think his results did not earn him a better rank. But he's a guy that I don't that I think he's way better than his results. And I think I think he's another guy that if he comes out a lot, we're going to see him move up into like the 40s, if not the 30s for next yep. year. Yep, I agree. Any any closing statements from everyone? You got? I'll give yeah. you like a minute. So. So with SKG, like again, his boss battle performance is the one that's on display, where he like had like one kind of not so great loss, or he, all right, not two depending on how you look at it. He lost to Phil and Jimmy Joe. Um, I've never played Phil. I've never seen Phil play, but I think that kind of shows that that's not a very good loss. That's a bad loss. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, Phil's not terrible, but. He, I mean, yeah. If you look at Phil's results, it's like he's not close to making it. Right. But it's then, not. so that was actually after CEO. Or CEO came first, and he beat NTA. Who? Okay, NTA is not on the rankings, but it's only because he didn't qualify. He didn't go to enough events. NTA, if we had like a hidden boss category, he would be on it. Um, Why didn't we, by the way? Because um, it was thought of too late the honorable <laughs> mentions were about to be called hidden bosses and i was like no they're not hidden bosses everyone knows about that like because we had them last that's year that's not how it works like like yeah. low was one last year it was pretty yeah funny. that was weird i, I just yeah so to... like if if we did it again um people that would be on it would be like um frey. The, the, yeah frey nta uh Darren. Bonze. Darren. Bonze, Bonze, would be a boss. Bonze didn't go to an na tournament he doesn't count Oh, okay. okay, I guess that makes sense. Um, so, like, those three for sure. Um, but either way, uh, SKG beat NTA and he beat Nintendude. And, you know, those are those are pretty good wins. Yeah. I had him at 63. So, he, oh, was, he so, won 63. So, your ballot went out. All right. So, the next I, guy I, on, our, on our rankings is pretty special in my opinion because it happens <laughs> to be me. Absolutely me. So, congrats to me. Um, I'm just gonna talk about myself and like how I feel bias. about. Yes, <laughs> I had it with all my own. <laughs> I will talk about my own bias for a minute. Um, at Let's Go, I was not playing on my Xbox controller, and with with SmashCon, I did. Now I'm gonna say that's not like the whole reason, but I had some really stupid losses, and I can understand why I'm here. I had losses to like some guy named Waxy Joe. Like I don't even that guy's know terrible. who who knows. <laughs> I don't even know who Waxy Joe is. I forgot who I played. I think I play like Fox. Every time I try to play Fox on console, it just doesn't work for me. That's who's that's... Spark. Yeah, who is Spark? He's, Explain this he's one. Some, he's some melee guy, and I played Fox again, and I lost every time. And it's <laughs> just like... Your Fox lost to Toxic on my rooftop. When you lose to You're Spark, and why will not you switch character? Why don't you be like? I like Wait a Fox. Minute, I just my lost to my Spark. Fox is good online. Okay, it's good online. It's really I'm gonna... not. Either Fuck way. <laughs> Your loss to Sparks, I think a lot of people might have ignored because it was at Don't Park on the Grass, and that's another event that I think people that everyone ignored. Uh, I didn't ignore that loss. Uh, so I, went, I told you earlier, I went through the list of all the people that automatically were disqualified from my top 64. Super, you got 17 that Don't Park on the Grass and lost to Spark. You were in my list of people disqualified from my top 64. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about what about the 2-0 against you, though? Let's let's talk about that. <laughs> let's okay, talk not, about everyone, that. Everyone beat, me. everyone beat me at Mons 4. Everyone beat me at Mons 4. Yeah, I didn't, and I since, didn't beat anybody. I beat Professor since Wizard. Regionals, since regionals weren't included on the ballot, like a lot of people just didn't know that happened. All right, so what I what I want to know is, uh, I, I, know, I know Robert thinks I'm bad, but I don't know what Dark Horse's opinion is of me. I don't think we've ever played Dark Horse, like not once. Well, no, see, there there was this one time we played where you had just lost a money match to Dave, and you went, "Hey, money match me because I need to beat Baltimore." Ball too. Yeah, last battle too. <laughs> you said money match me because I need to beat Baltimore because I guess you assumed you would beat me, and then that was when I just kind of destroyed you. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah. It was rough. I was yeah, that was really weird for me. That was that. I... <laughs> <laughs> was it? it was weird, huh? Yeah, it's all right. Weird. It's weird for a lot of people. A lot of people don't expect me to beat them. Well, it's more like I was. I'm a lot better now, and that was like twenty. That was twenty sixteen. You were so, playing pretty bad. I was playing really bad too. I was just styling. My my problem and 
my problem is is my consistency in general like some days i'm just like i'm just on and i can take wins like this like at smash con i just two out everyone like it was easy i just zoned out and i just two out everyone besides boom but you know it's just like Consistency so, is a big problem. So what me. were your what were your wins? Who all did you two? Okay, two I, I so two we can get off the losses. Uh, two owed hipster, two owed Yoba Light, two one Mr. Sir, two owed Raychu. I two owed everyone in my in my um my pool for Let's Go. So like, I sometimes I just go on a tear and then like something happens and it just like just something you know something breaks in my brain or something. I don't know. But um, as far and then you as you drop back down to your level, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> I traveling is really hard for me too, and like I'm like the type of person where like by the second day I'm worn out. Not an excuse, just how I feel. That doesn't always affect how I play. Sometimes I even play it better on the second day. But it's just like traveling is super hard for me, so I don't know where I'm gonna be next year or if I'm gonna even be on next year because traveling, because college, because money, because reasons. But I would love to prove everyone wrong because I feel I can, and I am willing to do that if I get the money. I'm I'm willing to say that I can get myself up into the 30s or 20s by next year if I were to really really go at it. And you know, just just public public thing. I'm coming for anyone if I am at a console tournament. Yo, but um, can we talk about your most important performance of the year, which was the uh, combo contest? What happened there? <laughs> I wasn't satisfied with what I had, and I was yeah. like, okay, I'm like, I'm gonna do this better, this isn't good enough, but then I remember talking, I think it was, I think it was Clubba, Clubba's like, yeah, you should've just finished it, you would've got through first round. Yeah, so. dude, no one had any idea what you were doing. <laughs> I was I was pulling for you in combo blaze, man, I figured at least- I really two. wanted combo to make it through, because oh, he, he was gonna do a blindfolded one next. I was hoping I, I one combo there. Blaze, just the blindfold one to start. I said, just do the blindfold one to start. You'll, you'll win the crowd over, and then because of how hype your first combo was, there on out, you'll just get a default, at least like a decently good score. Like, that's how they do it. Uh... You get a really good score. Everyone has first impressions. He blew it. Combo Blaze blew it. Should have done like, the blindfolded combo. Uh, I will but say, if you only have one, you, you can't really. Le last I mean, thing. If you, only have one, if you only have one chance, you burn your best one. That's what you do. <laughs> He doesn't. Well, you're not gonna beat Prince. You're not. You're not. Yeah. You're playing for second place. You're not playing for first. Last thing about me, just to want to say, I kind of like being an underdog too, because then it feels sweeter when I just pwn people. So bring it on. Oh yeah, that's always fun. I love that. I love it. It's like my favorite thing. Yeah. So I'm kind of glad. I think, like keep I underrating think, me, please. I think. For, I I think for for me when I was going through you, uh yeah you got top 32 at, at SmashCon, which is good, but. Uh, your strongest win was Yobo Light there, and that's not a bad win. It's actually a really good win because he's a good player. Uh, and so it's like Mr. Sir, you had some, you had some solid wins there. Um, you were missing any like big huge wins, which a lot of people are missing big huge wins. So it's not like I hold that against you because you beat at SmashCon, you beat all the people thrown at you that you're supposed to. You didn't lose to anybody bad. You lost to like really good players. You beat everyone else thrown at you. That was like a really good tournament for you. But let's go. You had that questionable loss to Waxy Joe. Um, and then don't park in the grass. He lost to Spark. Yeah. And for me, those two losses without a signature. So Robert was talking about earlier with Mad Rush. Uh, Mad Rush had like a really, really good win and some bad losses, while other people had okay wins and good losses. And he said, you know, the big win is maybe more valuable than a bad loss if the other people don't have any really outstanding wins. And you don't have any outstanding wins. You have good wins, right? Like you have all rank player or like rank quality levels potential ranked player wins. So like, you know, the Raychu, the the Mr. Sir, the Yobo, right? Those are all really good wins. Um, but they're not like, I don't think those wins are good enough to excuse the Waxy Joe and the Spark loss. To me, those were kind of like deal breakers. And that's why I just feel like I couldn't put your top 64. So, so one problem for me, like when you, Mr. Sir and Yobo Light are good wins. Obviously I know those guys real well. And they're strong players, but they're also players that are kind of like good because sometimes they can get a big win, but but they're not really players that are like you wouldn't expect them to get upset, right? Like, like both of them have have their share of, of losses. So, so for me, getting a win on on someone like Yobolite is it's impressive, but it's it's way less big a deal than someone like Narwhal, where you know Yobolite he's gotten some big wins himself, but he's you know collected his fair share of, of losses. Whereas Narwhal, it's he's a lot less likely to get upset. So. Yep. But when he does get upset, it's it's a way bigger. Yep. Well, let's just move on from me from now. Uh, 
Maybe see me in 2018. I have no idea. Maybe. Play me online. I'll kick your ass. <laughs> All right. 61. 61. We have Lorenzo. So who wants to tell me about Lorenzo? All right. So he is the only solo DK main on the rankings. Sorry to spoil number 60 through 1 for you, but there are no <laughs> others. Um, so he only went to one event in the US, but he went to Gommel in Canada. Um, I had Lorenzo at, oh, at 64. So he like just made it. I had Super at 63, SKG at 62. That's what it was. So he just barely made it for me. And honestly, what did it was that he, he had like one not so great loss, which was um, Vowels up in Canada. Now, that's he not lost awful. Vowels. Vowels is pretty good. Yeah, Vowels is pretty good. Um, he's like like hidden boss category. Definitely, yeah. But Lorenzo lost the Vowels after taking game one in 31 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So, so I that remember happened. that. Is the Giffy Cat match? I remember yeah. that. Oh my so, god. But the reason what what brought him into my top 64 was his win over Shalaka down in Brazil. Which was not included well, on ballots, well, but was mentioned. That's a huge win. That's a big win. Um, so yeah, but were we supposed to include that or even consider that? It's yeah, we it on the page. Like, that, that, that was the thing, right? So like, it was supposed to be just North American results. That's why, like, I don't know. I was told to just we said we could not... look at Japanese results. Uh, Wait, what? We, I was told, I was told to not consider. I was told to not even consider for a moment beast or south america or japanese results and that's why i didn't consider beast results and i didn't consider japanese results or south america results so for me lorenzo could. wasn't that high because he, I, I was supposed to not count his shalaka win. yeah i thought the whole point of the the rankings was that it was like north not north american players but north american so that's tournament. that's like what qualifies you but i thought when we when we agreed to look at regional results i was pretty positive we said that we could look at like Japanese results or you know foreign results for micro seeding. I mean Japanese results are on a totally different game. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. really interesting to see that. Like, cause I talked to Preston and Preston like, yeah, no, include it. So we'll we'll get to that later, cause that'll probably be later in the list. Be sure to see. Yeah, that'll here. be a big deal when it comes to. People. Oh yeah, I'm sure it will be. So Certain Lorenzo, pro I'm eh, I don't know how to feel about Lorenzo. I've never played him, so that's how I feel. Let's move on to number sixty. Which is Mad Rush. Um, I have we talked about Mad this Rush. man a lot. Yes, we talked about this man a lot, actually. So it's almost like we almost don't need to talk about him, but we might as well for a minute. I, I had him at 55. I uh, I have not played. 55. I think I've played Mad Rush in friendlies, and then I know it's friendlies, but I've never lost a friendlies to Mad Rush. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter because this is ranked. But... Have you ever played D35, Dark? I think if you play D35, uh, yeah, played D35, you're, you're not at 55. <laughs> With the yeah. loss to D thirty five. Playing... So like <laughs> losses were not obviously not great, but then his some of his victories, like uh Yeah, Janitor and Lord Narwhal are big, big Janitor, guys. yeah, Janitor and Narwhal are like you can't you can't ignore those. Um he beat Jimmy Joe who was ranked last year. He beat okay, uh... he beat Steve Dajal who was ranked last year. Did everyone beat Dajal at that tournament though? He was high out of his mind. It was you're talking about Shine. Dijal got like 50th or something. He did terrible. He lost to everybody. <laughs> I didn't know who he is. So Dijal, Dijal lost to like random people. He lost to like Andy Kins and people, right? So uh, I don't, I don't, I just, I don't even think about that Dijal win. Uh, for me, if you look at the Lord Narwhal win, uh, he won against Lord Narwhal and Falcon Dittos. They actually re replayed in bracket later on. And if you notice, he lost the rematch. Um, that that match, Narwhal went Kirby. I think Kirby. Uh, to counter him, and Arlo ended up winning with Kirby, but he lost the Falcon Ditto in, in placement pools. Uh, I so believe he also he lost won. game one. They did game one Falcon Dittos in the rematch, and Narwhal lost again, and then he switched to Kirby. I might be Yeah, and then he, ended up winning, then he ended up winning the set, right? Yeah, And he did. No, Matters even switched to, to Pico for game three and still lost. Uh, so, and then the Janitor win, I think, was the same. I think it was Falcon Dittos again. Uh, don't quote me on that. I don't know. I didn't ask, but um, I have a feeling for some reason that was Falcon Dittos. So, Mad Rush has two good wins. One of them, he ended up losing. He's one and one in, right? So he ended up losing, you know, the next time. And then the other one, the janitor win, 
If it's Falcon Dittos, I mean, yeah, people want to talk about how it's not a coin flip or whatever. I don't know. To me, Falcon is just like, if, if you get the, a couple things go your way, which the game is, is so fast paced and it, there's, there's a lot of gambles that players take, especially players like Janitor who are playing like overly aggressive or overly combo heavy, right? Like he's throwing out very risky things and he's taking a lot of risks. I think it's he's a he's a player that's very easy to upset if you're doing Falcon Doodles with because he's not going for wins. He's going for something cool. Uh, and then the Narwhal win, he ended up losing in, in bracket anyway later on. So I don't know how much I gave value to that. And then I looked at his other, he had some really bad losses there that I just couldn't, I couldn't put him in my top 64. Yeah. So, so she, I like that loss, but I think he's a strong player. So, I think he's a strong player. He's great in doubles. But those couple things to me, were enough. I mean, those couple things that for me ruled him out of my top of the I, I know it's probably wrong to like consider this, but honestly, like Falcon Dills especially are such a coin flip, and I know it's a meme of sorts, but it's true. Like Falcon Dills are such a coin flip where like whoever wins it, it's just like it's like a toss up, and like sometimes to look at like wins in the Falcon Ditto. It's just like, oh, well, okay, you know, he probably got more grabs than the other person did, so, you know, so, whatever. So how much did you guys in general look at, like, it seems like Shears a lot looked at each individual tournament and the player's performance, like what character they went, what their, like, the, the person's situation, you know, John's they might have had, or, or whether legitimate or not, you know, um, whereas I guess when I've been you know confronted with this much data my first instinct is just to look at okay what are the wins what are the losses I, i'm curious what you guys think was you know where was there a lot of voters looking at individual like okay he won but it was a falcon ditto so so we got to wait like I, that yeah, last I'm curious about mostly that just looking at win. i'm curious about I've, that too actually i i didn't so the only time i looked at a win subjectively is if it was like uh something like someone just like sandbagging like like isaiah you know like like uh like josh's went over isaiah like i didn't i didn't look at that so like you a... protect someone's ranking for them sandbagging oh god so i can just go well, now oh, all right oh, you're, you're gonna you're gonna go ahead and give full value to josh's win <laughs> over alvin yeah <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it, it, you know, it's your fault. To... If you pick, if you pick the character in tournament, it's your fault. Uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm a Luigi. I'm a Luigi made now. Wait, 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 I'm a Luigi wait, made wait, now. But Alvin, Alvin in that tournament for CEO Dreamland, it's a, he losing that set to Bark doesn't mean anything for him because he still won the tournament. He did win the tournament, so that's money, a little different because he won. But Isaiah, I mean, come on. Yeah, he lost. Yeah, he was out of the like, tournament from that. I, for a yeah, Isaiah, yeah, won, Isaiah wanted to be out of the tournament. Isaiah wanted to be out of the tournament. He wanted to stop. Same with Genesis. He, <laughs> wanted, he wanted, he wanted, to, be wanted to quit. All, right. All right. So last thing I want to talk about with uh, like, I want to uh, talk about Madras. Just last thing I, I before we before we switch off, did doubles affect his placement for anyone? Did anyone consider not wow? Not nope. not for you. Okay. okay. Wasn't wasn't well, on the ballot. So I didn't look at it. I think it, I think it did for other people. I think. So I mean, Madras, So you, you, you want to talk about like methods? Like I I, I kind of went through a lot of it multiple times, and I readjusted my, my list that I first made was is a, was way different than the list I ended up with. I did a lot of adjustments over time, um, and I did look at once I set everything into the tiers. I then looked at each individual player, and then I started looking at all their wins and losses. Then I looked at how they got their wins and losses, and that's kind of why I made these adjustments. Mad Rush on my first inspection, I had him in my top 64, and I thought he was a lock. And then I started looking at everything in detail. And that's when I was like, I don't know if this guy's top 64 material based on its results, right? It, the results we have we have to look at. Uh, so that's why I rolled it out. Uh, I guess other people didn't do the same set of scrutiny, which it's valid if you didn't. If you had a more clear formula that wasn't so subjective, that's still valid. But that's how I went through my process. Yeah, yeah my my bottom 10 were separated by 0.5. That's crazy. I like to point that out. So like my bottom 20 were separated by 0.8. So that was it was all really close for me. Yep. All right. So let's move on to uh, number fifty nine here, which is which is Hydra, which is actually like Kimmy's like twin brother to the face. Like you could you could plaster like Kimmy Mario on this and be that's like, called, oh yeah, that's that's Kimmy. called that's called being a twin. That's just called being a twin. <laughs> it's actually called being an identical yeah. twin. Identical. Yeah, we have a, do we have a separate word for that? Identical yeah, twin. Yeah, yeah. Like but, he's not uh, just a twin. He's not. He's a twin where he looks just like his brother. He and is, plays the same is. character. What's with that? And plays. He's just like he's a clone. It's like, and they sound the same too. He's we, like a. We. Yeah. He. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. honestly. That's what. That's what a twin is. 
My brother plays Yoshi. <laughs> I All actually right. had Hydra one spot above Mad Rush. I had him at 54. 54? Wow. But they had the same score. They had the same. I had them both at like a 4.7. Yeah, apparently they're fraternal. But um, things I want to say about Hydra. Close enough. Close enough. Hydra is a old school player like I am. We both started around like 2007, 2008. We were both in the same clan when that was a thing online. And to see him get as far as he did, uh, coming back, because he came back after a while and he hasn't been playing. And I'm sure Kimmy, like, you know, really holstered him and tried to get him up to snuff. But I remember playing him first and he was doing like 2006 rolls, like he was on high roll. It was the funniest thing ever. And to see him develop in such a player in such a way he has, he's, he's definitely followed the footsteps of his, his brother. Um, if someone wants to talk about the wins that Hydra had, because I know he had a couple of big ones, go ahead. Yeah, four stock on marbles? I don't know. I, yeah, so he I went back and watched that video, and it was like, he destroyed marbles. Yeah. yeah so I did not expect that at all. Marbles and Knackle. Those marbles are, and Knackle. Yeah, I mean, he also beat, like, Andykin, Soto, and Onski, and LL, but as yeah, far as people... Yeah, he, he had a really good result there. Um... I honestly think Hydra could be. I think I think Hydra is actually a better player than his rank. Um, I agree. For me, I, I didn't I have him any higher than. I think what was he like 59th or something? I had him kind of I think around that range on my rankings. Uh, and, and my reason for not putting him any higher was because he lost to Dogs Johnson at uh, at boss battle, um, which isn't a bad loss, but you know that's that, that's actually not really that bad of a loss. I think the bigger thing for me was he lost to Paco. Or Paco, I think, and I, I always called Paco as like a joke to make fun of it, but because uh, I made a mistake once when I was drunk and I just keep up with it. But anyway, who is uh, Paco? Paco? He's uh, a NorCal. He's a NorCal, NorCal player. If you look at if you look at Hydra's Genesis three results, he he got 49th, which you go okay, he made bracket, but you know, dang, Pank made bracket. So, uh, you know, he lost he lost to, to, to I'm gonna say it again, Paco. Um, and to me, that's just a, a Hydra shouldn't be losing that set. You can say it's because he was coming back from not playing in a long time. But I still think that's a set he shouldn't lose. Uh, and then he lost to Dogs Johnson after beating Marbles. So, I mean, I think it's good credit to Dogs. And I think that's kind of something why I thought Dogs should have been in the top 64. Because he did have that win over Hydra. Uh, that was one of the big things for me for wanting to put Dogs in the top 64. Um, but, uh, you know, he beats Marbles, like, really badly. And then loses to Dogs Johnson. And so, a loss like that, it's somewhat questionable for a guy. You know, that's why I think... That's why I think... It's not, like, questionable in the sense that he shouldn't be ranked. I, I had my top 64. I think everyone else did. That's why he's on there. Um... But it's somewhat like you know disappointing. Hydra's a guy I think will move up a lot because his oh, yeah. brother is so good, and his brother is going to be. I, I mean, I don't know what his brother's going to be in the rankings, but you can already tell his brother's probably pretty high on the rankings. Uh, and his brother's like really so good, and, and Hydra has. I've played him; he has all that talent. You know, he can be up there. But he had these couple of losses, and I, and I think that's what's put him down in the fifties, the high fifties, instead of like the forties or something where we think a lot of people want him to be. Yeah. I think if you if you ranked him based on the second half of the year. He'd be higher, and I think he just, he just, you know, he started out of Genesis, and that was like, what was that, like the first time people saw him in a console tournament? Yeah. Um, and then after that, he just did pretty much nothing but get better. Yeah. Um, well, his wins, too. I mean, if, like, NACL and Marbles are both players that I think we could see, in, and personally, I, I, I don't know anything. I didn't fill out about it, and I haven't been privy to any information, so I have no clue where those two guys are. Um, on the rankings, and it could, I think, potentially it could vary a lot based on just like what people's opinions were. And so, if you're someone that thought, okay, Marbles, yeah, he's really good, he's been around a while, you know, I'll, I'll put him pretty high. Then you're gonna you're gonna consider that to be a big win for Hydra. But but if you know, some people might might look at Marbles and say, okay, well, yeah, he lost to Hydra, got four stocks, he's he's not looking so good this year, and then. You know, do this maybe something like that with NACL, and then you're you're not boosting Hydra up as much from from those wins. Yeah, uh, the yeah, thing that's a good point. Very good point. Yeah, the thing I wanted to say about Hydra, this is like kind of a joke we have, kind of online thing. Kimmy is known for his up smashes. Now Hydra is the opposite. He's known for his down smashes. He's 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 the Hydra down. He does smasher. have some so some solid down. Smash. He he does do the down smash a lot. Like Kimmy, Kimmy will up smash almost always if you approach him. Hydra, he will down smash you. It's just it's just crazy. I don't know, man. I think he might up smash a lot. Did you see uh did you see his clips in the video? <laughs> I mean, he's Mario, he's gonna up smash, but he definitely is... he, he goes for he goes for quality over quantity with yeah, up smash. Yeah. Like Kim, Hydra Kimmy will pull him out like no matter what. Like 
oh, I'm being attacked, up smash. You know, like, a, a, a army of a hundred against Kimmy, he would just up smash all of them. <laughs> Alright, so, let, let's move on to uh, number 58, who is a resident of, of Baltimore, which is Daniel. Um, I don't have too much to say about Daniel. The last time we played was at SmashCon 2016, where I 2 would him. Thank you very much. Uh, but I'm sure he's gotten better since then, so if the Baltimore people want to go ahead and hype him up or tell us about yeah, the story sure. of Daniel, go ahead. Alright, so Daniel was the second player that I did not have in my top 64. Ooh. That made it. Um, I think oh. part of it, part of the reason he made it, it was because people looked at his results and they saw, they looked at like, oh, 25th at SmashCon. Look at that. But that literally happened because I lost to him on purpose. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> You're rigging the rankings, Dark Horse. You need to fucking kick him out what the hell i mean i thought that was like pretty common knowledge um but Isn't that, uh like against the tournament oh rules is it... a little bit? Yeah, i gotta <laughs> i gotta <laughs> remove this ballot it's not dude do we have to tell the smash con to's about this Holy so I, you know, I may have gone for like some falcon punches off stage or something but he but he beat dark gentleman um he played a close out with raz but that doesn't matter he beat Cheers, and he beat Marbles. He's a loss to Raz. Just... Yeah, the loss to Raz was mind blowing. Um, That's so bad. It was so it was game three, and he was up four to one, and then he lost. To what? I, yeah. I can't even imagine Raz taking four stocks in a row without like killing himself. Yeah, Raz was Yoshi. That's... He was not Luigi, but still, Daniel Daniel <laughs> lost a four to one comeback to Raz. Um, and that led to me having to lose to him. So I blame Daniel for everything. But he, he has wins over, again, Dark Gentleman and Indefa, who did not make the rankings. I, I think some people might have had Indefa in their top 64. I didn't. Some people might have had Dark Gentleman. I didn't. But those those are good wins. And then beating Marvels uh, at Let's Go it was pretty legit. And yeah. beating Shears is free, but, you know, yeah. that counts. It's, it's beating Shears okay, is so, always free. Always so free. Daniel, yeah, Daniel I actually had, I actually had Daniel really high. Um, I might have been the reason he got on the rankings, I don't know. Uh, Wait, how high? Oh, I had him in the 50s. I had him in the 50s. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so, I think Daniel's really good. I play him all the time. Uh, he did beat me at Let's Go. Um... I wasn't too happy about that game, um, but Daniel, like, I don't know. I beat I beat Daniel almost every single week. Like, I beat him with Kirby. I beat him with Mario. I beat him in Falcon Dittos. I beat him with Fox. Like, I beat him with every character I go. Uh, he did beat me at um, Let's Go, and I did go Kirby, and he ended up beating me. Um, but I had Daniel high because he had the win against Marbles. He made the bracket at Smash Con, and I didn't know Dark Horse threw the game to him. So in my mind... He never beats Dark Horse at weeklies, and he pulls off the strong win against Dark Horse. That's what I thought. I didn't know he was doing stand back. But I thought, you know, he pulled off the strong win against Dark Horse, and he beat uh, Dark Gentleman, and he beat Defa, who are all ballot-worthy guys. Um, and then he and he did beat me at, at Let's Go, and he did beat Marbles, which I think was a really strong win. It's, so for those reasons, I put him, uh, like, higher up, because I didn't think he had really any bad losses. Uh, I think his worst loss, I mean, the Raz loss he had, but... With placement pools, uh, with the waterfall, with the divisions, you're gonna play a lot of people, and I think it's a lot easier when you're in when you're not in the, the upper echelon of players, and you're in this, you know, 40s to 50s to 60s range. You're going to probably have some losses that aren't super quality losses, uh, and you're gonna have some wins that I think are, are are in that same range as well. So, the Raz loss was bad, uh, but I thought the Marbles win was good enough to offset that. And then he beat all the other people that are in his range, right? The the 50s, the 60s, the off the ballot level players. Uh, so that was my logic for for Daniel. Uh, I think other people, I guess, had similar logic as well. So I didn't know Dark Horse did the set. That kind of maybe changed my opinion now, looking at it in hindsight. It wasn't well known to us at the time or me at the time, so I kind of gave it some pretty good value. Uh, I gave it the same value basically for him beating me because he usually fails us in the weeklies, and then he beat us both in tournament, and I think that was kind of important for him as a player. So. That was my logic with Daniel. Yep. Uh, the thing I want to say about Daniel, and this is, might be a general to all Falcons, is that usually I look at Falcons one or two way. They're solid or they have something special to them. 
And unfortunately, I don't see that special to him, but I do see that he is a solid player. Like, he's a very solid Falcon. Like, he understands the game at a very solid level. And I think what he needs to get up to that higher rank is maybe try and... I'm not... See, when people think, I think especially like, oh, they, they go for like more fancy stuff. No, that's not it. It's like, if you look at like, I don't know, Zero's neutral and how he decides things, it's way different than any like Mad Rush or me or anything like that. Like, it's just like the decisions that, that. that Daniel makes are at a solid level, but they're not at a, p a higher level than that right now. Yeah, I, I fully agree with that. Um, Zero Zero has the best for a Falcon. He's like, the, I mean, other than the Boom. So mine is Boom and Alvin for, for, for any other Falcon. Zero has the, the, the best decision making I've seen neutral for any Falcon. Oh, yeah, and and Daniel, Daniel, Daniel's pretty solid, but I, I also think Daniel's weak in the neutral. I think he has good fundamentals. He doesn't, he has good execution. He doesn't really drop his combos. He kind of knows what to do. He has very good off to play in a lot of ways. Um, but he doesn't make like overwhelmingly surprising neutral decisions like Zero does, where he feel you feel like he's already a step ahead of you. Daniel always feels like he's just there, uh, and he, he plays gets to your pace. Very well he it. plays to your pace. Yeah, he, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and because of that, you know, I don't know how much better Daniel can get though, uh, because you talk about like that. What well, that's makes Zero so special, but I think that makes him special because of something inherent in Zero, and I don't know if that special thing is a thing that people can learn. I don't... So my, my, uh, basically what I'm getting at is, 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 is that specialness? I don't yeah, think there's it's a, like... There's an intermediary in between them in, in low power, who's like definitely... Lowe's Falcon is like clearly better than Daniel's, and it's a lot scarier to play against, but he's not Zero, you know? He's not... Like, Zero's nuts, but low he feels like he's he's methodical and uh reasonable stuff and he clearly does stuff he's picked up off of like you know boom and alvin and he just has like reasonable improvements over kind of the standard daniel daniel i feel like he's a good falcon but there's a lot of good falcons and yeah it's it's, not, it's so hard to stand out to the level that that like low yeah. or obviously not even close to zero yeah but but there is a path there it's not like if you're just an okay falcon you're just screwed yeah that you're stuck it's like here. i you think can, what, you can optimize both yeah i think what daniel needs to do and i will say it, i think he needs to play online more or he needs to go out and start start going outside his region because what happens and i feel and why i feel like certain players get ranked this low is that they get too comfortable they get too comfortable with their play style and then when it comes to like super majors or something like that you know they can run through the people they're used to you know play at their pace and whatnot but if something does something like that's outside of their understanding it's just like they freeze and it's just like they can't comprehend and like it's yeah. almost confusing yeah them. he does he does really well um against like us the people that he plays a lot yeah, I guess he was. Be he, 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 really benefited, he really benefited from having at both of the big games he went to. He, he, he had, he had the benefit of playing years. Daniel had the benefit of playing local people at both uh, majors he went to to advance to where he got to in tournament, right? Like, like at Let's Go, he got as far as he did because he he had the benefit of playing somebody that he can effectively coin flip, right? Because he plays me all the time. And then at, at Smash Con, you got the benefit of getting a coin flip with Dark Horse, right? So because he plays both of us all the time, those aren't as big of wins because they're kind of like, he already plays at our level and we play at his level. It's because we all know each other really well. So he did have that benefit at majors. I think that kind of might have inflated in his standings. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna be honest here. I probably had a lot of bias when ranking Daniel because he's Baltimore and put him higher than everyone else did. That's, I think, why he also got in the 50s for his rank. But... I yeah. think he should start playing with the the PA guys more. He needs to. Yeah, he needs. You guys he needs are Baltimore. You're not that far away. He needs to get up there and. and he's way closer learning. to Nova. Like he like, should go uh, to their stuff more. Uh, KD3 right. and and those guys style. Yep. He is, he has stuff to learn there. So let's move on to someone who is from. <laughs> I had Daniel at 94. <laughs> 90, yeah. 94. I, I wouldn't have oh, expected him in the top six. Uh, <laughs> I, wouldn't have, I don't know if I'd put him at 94. <laughs> Nine, that's lower than Jam Jar. You had a lower than Jam Jar. <laughs> Let, let's that's move on. Let's bad. move on to uh, Mr. Fifty Seven, which is Jam is higher than us. Yeah. Is, <laughs> Sorry, that was way too low. I don't know. Uh, Vinio, and so funny story, and I'm sure Shears will think this is funny too. Finio's old tag used to be basic, and oh, yeah. Shears just I loves still making basic. fun of calling of calling him basic. You know, it was such a good name. I don't know yeah, it was appropriate too. He should have just been basic. <laughs> he he should have just been basic. 
I remember Basic back when he played, and he's made great strides ever since he moved from console. But it was really funny because like he'll come, he came online, right? And he's like, "Oh, I'm not an online player." It's like that's where you started. Remember your roots, Basic. Remember your freaking roots. And he wasn't he's always been an online player. Yeah, he, he he just says that because he because Baltimore is an online, and he's always lived in our shadows, wanting to be as cool as Baltimore. And so he just says he's not online because he wants to be like Baltimore. And then now that he's like done well and he has some wins, he now thinks he's evolved. That's why he's retired. He's like, I beat people from Baltimore. I've 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 made my goal, and now he's retired. <laughs> All right. So that's the first they, time that's we met Finio, the first time we met Finio, me, Dave, and LD drove up to <laughs> PA and played them, and I beat Finio playing with one hand with Donkey Kong. And they like they never are let we, him forget. Are we, are we gonna talk about the wins or is it just gonna be? Cause well, let's let's. I, talk. I have to clarify that I've already heard all of the Baltimore trash talk about Finney about four times. <laughs> Let, let's Finney talk about we, the wins. Get to the wins. Let's but get never to the wins. All right, so Finney's Finney's wins. Where the hell is he on my ballot? Oh, there he is. I had him at fifty-six. Oh, close. Um, he beat. Let's see, he beat no one at SmashCon. He beat me once. I don't think that was counted for anything. <laughs> uh, well, so we looked at regional stuff, but not local stuff. So is like, MVP not a regional? No, no, it is. So, like, I, I looked at that. That's why I had him. One of the reasons I had him up there. Um, he also beat Yobo and Star King and Protagonist and Dark Gentleman. He beat a lot of people at Keystone. That's pretty um, good. But he lost to Stevie G there. Not great, although Stevie G did make yeah. it. Since I was yep, Stevie G so. did make it. But yeah, I mean, if they're going to be close. And then at ESB, he beat Yobo again, and he also beat Hammerheart. Oh, oh I didn't so, see that. No, no, you're looking at Horby. Wins. Oh, yeah. I am looking at Horby. Yeah, crap, 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 crap. I went, yeah, I went one yeah. row. Uh, I was one row off. He didn't go to ESB. I was like, wait, he wasn't there. But he beat Star King, he beat Yobo, he beat Jimmy Joe, he beat Protagonist, he beat Dark Gentleman. He lost to Horby so, at Keystone. Yeah. Pretty good selection of players from the East Coast. Yeah. So the yeah. thing I want to say about Finio is that unfortunately he's retired, but it's so weird because I feel like this would be his year. This would be Finio's year if he just kept at it, but he just decided, oh, I don't like the game anymore. He's such a weird person. He's always been like this. Like, I really feel like if Finio just kept at it, because he was getting there, I felt like he was really starting to make a stride and he, he showed it a little bit at SmashCon too. But just like something in his head, he's just like, oh, I just don't want to play anymore. I don't know if he so still I plays. So I don't actually think like he the game anymore. Or I thought he was just like too busy to come out. To no, he thinks, he thinks he's, he, 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 he's he's console. He beat Baltimore. He's retired. That's what it is. Uh, but no, I agree with <laughs> you. I think, I think 2018 would have been his year. I, I actually think he'll come back. He'll totally come back. Um, I think for 2018, he's going to do really well. He's a guy I think is very is very underranked. Uh, but for him, I honestly, I looked at his smash con and that absolutely means nothing to me. His yeah. Smashcon results mean proof That's nothing right. to me. When he I said he Alvin beat no Wario. one, I was looking at Smashcon. Yeah. He, 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 he lost to Alvin and Wario, which I would totally expect. I would never hold that against him. He's going to lose to Alvin Wario. That makes sense. He actually had a, like a close game with Alvin or even a close set with Alvin. Yeah, um, he, had he had a really close game. game. <laughs> and, and, I, and I think he was even really close to Wario, too. I think his game was like, it was within reason, right? Like you could, it looked like he could have maybe taken a game, right? Um, okay. So, you know, he, had, he, had, he played close to both Alvin and Wario, but I expect him to lose that. But then he didn't beat anybody. Like his wins at SmashCon were like nothing. So you look at then you look at his Keystone results, and he had some good wins. He had a lot of wins. He played a lot of sets at Keystone. He played so many people. Uh, but he lost to Horby. He lost to Stevie G, which aren't bad losses at all. Uh, Stevie G's ranked. Uh, Horby, uh, he's probably going to be ranked. Cause he had a really good ESB and he had a, a good Keystone. I think he's going to be ranked. He'll probably be in our next round. Uh, so he has like good lo like the losses aren't bad, but he has two losses to two guys that are in his tier. And I think because of that, that's why you were seeing him in this first round of rankings, and we're not seeing him in like tomorrow or the day after. And I think because if you win some post war tournaments and he like sticks with him for 2018, we're gonna see him into these higher rounds and these like higher higher number or better numbers uh, for 2018 because he got all the rankings this year. But I really think he's way better than his spot. I think SmashCon really highlighted like definitely a problem, especially players that don't go to that many events have if they're seated well where his losses were wario alvin and jaime like those are not i mean jaime maybe like he could have had a chance possibly but but really those are all players that everyone would assume would beat him he wasn't yeah, but, supposed to be playing wario in that spot but, or, at, uh, alvin at that alvin. point it's like who who else he was supposed where, to be where, where playing ld actually chance to uh 
to get a big win. It, it, it almost seems like. Uh, at, wait, so why why didn't he? Oh, because LD uh, lost. Because LD beat Alvin. Yeah, um, so that's rough. But I mean, well, I think he was still. Would have played LD, and LD just destroyed him this summer when they played. But I mean, at least LD is like a little a little closer. Yeah. Um, yeah. With for the, some the, people, some people have a harder time yeah. with LD. So yeah. Yeah, with, with Wario, Alvin, and Jaime, it, it almost seems like he. It's hard to say like he didn't get a big win. He didn't he have get like, an opportunity yeah, to get yeah, a big win. Get a so it's, it's really rough, rough for him. Uh, Smashcon, Smashcon meant nothing to me for Finio. I, I basically, basically see them or raked him off of his Keystone results, which yeah, I think kind of were, were top sixty four quality. I just think because you only had Keystone results, that wasn't enough. Like I do think he's way better than his spot, but I, but looking at everyone else's results, I couldn't make a good argument to put him any higher. It's not fair to the people that went to things and earned better results. So I think if he goes to more of a tournament, and stays in 2018, and he keeps playing, I really think he's going to move up because I think he's that that good. He yeah, just, I completely agree. With you. I agree. If you, can, have, if you have one tournament to rank him by, it's it's not enough for him to be. Any here, here's here's my bias about everyone that's been ranked right now. I think does could be higher, deserves to be higher. I think SKG. I think Finio and I think Hydra. Those are the highest people I see moving up. Unfortunately for Madrush, I see him. He's kind of been standing where he's at. And I don't know if he's ever going to break out of that. But look out for, for Finio, SKG, and Hydra, and maybe me if I decide to go to things. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, SKG is scary if he actually goes with them. Yeah, if he if he gets his stride. So let's move on to someone who I feel falls into the Madrush department of kind of stagnant, kind of losing their stride, is number 56, Nintendo. Nintendo, uh... I cannot Nintendo, believe this guy even made the top I, <laughs> Nintendo used to be known. He was in Malva's clan, right? He was in Malva's clan online, and he was known as, like, the top five players because he was in Malva's clan, for, which, is, which is Isaiah for any, you know, people who don't know. Yeah. So, so he was known as the Mario, the guy, and he was known. And I think a lot of what carries him is his legacy sometimes, and I'm sure Shears would agree in some aspect. And he yeah. just hasn't, he just hasn't shown the same proficiency or, or necessarily like just anything with Fox. I feel like his Fox is like I don't sit, I don't sit down when I play Nintendo. I don't sit and think, oh my god, I'm gonna play Nintendo's Fox. It's gonna be tough. I think. Nintendo's Fox sucked. I miss when he played Mario. But yeah, his Fox is you throw it off the edge. Yeah. But, yeah. but his Mario so isn't anything like, special well, either. He he started picking up Fox. So when we started Xanadu, uh, and Nintendo used to be Baltimore or MDVA really. He lived cl cl he lived in Maryland but closer to DC. Uh, but he was basically you know Maryland, and we played him. And within a few months, like or even within like one month, he wasn't beating us anymore with Mario. And after months of him losing, he picked up Fox to try to like learn a character because he figured I can't win with Mario. I have to. I, Fox I think is a better overall character. I'm gonna focus on Fox. I think that has more, better long term results. And so he's moved to Fox. So while you like to think like you remember his Mario being really good, if he switched to Mario, he wouldn't have any better results than he has with Fox. At Beast, he lost to Jam with Fox, and I think he switched to Mario game four or game three, he lost like game one and game two with Fox in the rear. They weren't very close, but he at least took stocks. I think he switched to Mario and got four stocks in game three against Jam at Beast. I so, just think Fox requires a level of like precision and practice that he is not yeah. putting towards the game Absolutely at all. agree. Maybe, maybe he sure, should have tried just being a back throw peak. <laughs> I, I don't think his Mario is going to do any much better. His Mario yeah. you know, might get some people like the prize because people don't know the matchup. There's a lot of people that don't know the Mario matchup. So I think he can steal games on that. But I think if people know both the Fox and the Mario matchup, I think his Fox is a better has better odds than his Mario for for competing with people. Yeah, I I feel like Mad I mean, uh, sorry, I feel like Nintendo's on the way out of the rankings, and he just you know he does doesn't have the same amount of care, the same amount of passion as the people I do feel who could rank up. Because that's I think that matters too. It's like SKG is passionate, and I can tell that Hydra is too, and Finio is too if he wants to ignore it. And Nintendo just doesn't have that passion anymore. He's just like but he's a TO and a top melee player. Like. Yeah, he doesn't have the passion. He doesn't have the care or the passion, and his results show it. And I think yeah. I'm surprised he's on this list because he's... yeah, he got carried by his. I think people. I think he some people doing. Yunque once. Yeah, no, I think some people filling out ballots looked at placings a little bit too much. Oh yeah, he had two seventh places. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I was looking at his wins and losses, and I was like, how did he even make it? Um, so he lost to that. That was another thing that I, that really helped him was he his losses were like skg um 
SKG. Oh, you know what? He has that loss to Raichu. That was yeah, Raichu. It's a little. I mean, he's not bad. Raichu's, Raichu's good. Bad. Raichu's up Raichu's... and coming. Look out for Raichu. He has multiple. He has multiple. I mean, Raichu's, a, that... Raichu's my homie, and I think he's yeah, really he good. Yeah, he beat Mad Rush twice. Okay, once. He beat me, Jimmy Joe. He's multiple wins over over Mad Rush. Multiple wins over Mad Rush. That's good, but that's a guy that lost to D35. You know, I, I think that's something that makes me happy, and I'm sorry to put Nintendo on the spot, is that there is a lot of like, young and upcoming talent in 64. A lot of people are like, kind of like, oh yeah, just the same people play it. And it's like, no, we have people like Finio and Hydra and SKG. And that Raichu. Are, uh, Raichu. Just all these good young players who are just going to foster the growth. Quapples? Quapples? Young Quap is going to be 2020 fucking Smash Cut. Yeah, Honestly, Alvin honestly, Quapples. if Florida if Florida didn't collude at SmashCon, Quapples would have made D1. I think Quapples would be on the ballot, and Quapples would have been an honorable mention. Florida, Florida robbed Quapples of a of a of a ballot honorable mention spot. Quapples is Quapples is honestly like he's getting scary. Like he, we have this ranking system online, right? Of course, knock my Yoshi at MVP months. Uh, uh, we have this we have this ranking system for online, and we have Quapples right now at two plus, which means that uh, basically. <laughs> Ratings, I'm sorry. We have ratings on the Discord. He's two plus, and that's like the highest in your tier. And he's just been taking games from all these threes, and it's just like, oh yeah, I beat this guy, I beat this guy, I beat this guy. And he's, he's just yeah, like, as soon he's as we told hunt. him he was, he was a two, he was like, okay, uh, I beat this three, and then like 10 minutes later, he'd be like, okay, I beat this three. <laughs> Ten minutes later, be like, I beat a different one. He's a threatening kid. He's just it's, it's so funny. And he's so he, young he, that he's just gonna turn into a monster, and I'm scared for anyone. Oh no, yeah, he's, he, you know, if, if he, he's gonna be ranked this year, I think. If he goes to, if his parents let him go to, to tournaments, if he gets like, if he, if, it, if the school lets him like do like a, a field trip to Smash Con or something or whatever, I think he's gonna be ranked because he can beat a lot of people. MVP Bombs, he did well. He four stocked Mayoshi. Uh, he beat Insanity. He almost beat Star King, right? Like, he did really, really well. Uh, and he jumped second at the last Nova Weekly. But, you know, let's not make this the Quapple show. You know, yeah, we yeah, people yeah. Well, let's, let's move on uh, to our final player, 55. And I just want to say a little bit about this man. Uh, when I sat down for him at Let's Go, I actually won the first game, and I won it pretty handily with Falcon. And then my confidence made me think, okay, let's just go Pikachu, close it out, beat this guy, just another Kirby. I lost. And I'm like, okay. I wasn't feeling comfortable then, and then I said, okay, Pikachu again, and then I lost, and then it came down to 1-2. And I feel like, honestly, that match helped helped Horby a little bit, being rated higher than me, because what if I beat Horby? I think maybe I would have been rated a little higher, but that didn't happen, and I lost confidence. But I do want to say about that, though, is that I think I caught Horby off guard when I played Falcon in the way I did, because I think he's so used to... Pikachu's like, and I'm I'm an average Pikachu. Okay? Oh, oh not... Falcon beats Kirby. Falcon beats Kirby. That's that's the only reason why you won that game. Oh, we're getting into this. <laughs> I, I I think that, yeah, I just think that he's just way more trained in like Pikachu and whatnot, and I think that it's just something he knows. And I I'm pretty sure in his in his blurb, he he is a very intelligent. He you know he's more calculated in in his gameplay and whatnot. So, um, that's my experience with Corby. If anyone else has something else to say, because uh, so, Horby, I played him three times in tournament, and I've beaten him twice, and I lost to him once. Um, I want to say the first time I beat him, it wasn't even close. I just destroyed him. The second time was close, and the third time when I lost to him was was very close. But he's taken games off my Falcon and my Puff, and I've taken games with my Falcon and my Puff. So he's, you know, we've gone we've gone sort of back and forth. Um, he's gotten a lot better. Like as the year last like year and a half has gone by, and that shows with wins over like Hammerheart and Yobo and Supa and who else did he beat? Maybe Finio. Yeah, Finio. Did Maybe he beat Frian? Frian's Frian's good. Um, when, when was his set with Yobo Light or uh, uh, with, with Hammerheart? ESB. ESB. That's he good. had a really good ESB. Yeah, he did. But but. You look at, he lost to Protagonist, he lost to Master Handjob, and he lost to Mr. Sir. So that's why I had him in like the 59-ish spot. I had him a little lower down, just because of those losses. But I honestly, I think for, I mean, I think Horby, I think Horby is a guy that's going to really, because he's, he's motivated too. He, he also had a lot to Raz. He's a, smart, he's a very smart player. Horby's a very intelligent person. 
Uh, I think I think Orby's a guy that has a lot of hope for 2018. I think he's a high potential guy. Amer so American him, American Revan? American Revan? Maybe. I think he might. Yeah, he might be American Revan. But I also I could see him falling down too. I, I could really see him falling out of the rankings this year. But I could also see him moving up as well. He's got a lot of. He's got a really good mind for it. Um, but then, yeah, you look at some of his losses, and he's vulnerable. He, he collected so many losses. I, I think his thing for next year needs to be like, the wins are good, and and his wins, I guess, carried him up to up to this point. But like that is, you know, Protag, MHJ, Mister Sir, Marbles, Raz, like that is a bad list of losses. And and if he wants to get any higher, or, or probably even maintain the same position, he's got to yeah. cut those out. And and at the rate, it seems like he's improving. Uh, uh, I think he can, but that's going to be his challenge. Yeah. Or, not, or you just get Jamjar to write in that you got seventh at Shine, even though you didn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that put it on the card. Yeah, he actually got thirteenth. Um, for that's anyone, I, I think that's I think confused. Super made, made these slides actually. He yeah, got seventh at ESP. Yeah, he got seventh at ESP. Super, your slides are wrong. Oh, uh, my so slides wrong. Awesome. Might be. Oh yeah, Dogs wants me to say he beat me at Mom's for so. You know, there you go, dogs. Dogs, dogs got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I do think dogs got robbed. I, I really think dogs. Dogs got robbed. did get robbed. I agree. Dogs, you got robbed, dude. But he was, uh, he was uh, in my, he was who, in my top sixty-four. Who didn't? Who didn't have dogs in the top sixty-four? Yeah, it's weird. It's not like he wasn't like a well-known player or anything. <laughs> I heard his name all the time. Yeah, who didn't have it's him in the like top people, sixty-four? People are just leaving him out. I have no idea. But yeah, I didn't. It's not like I had him. It's not like I had him in the forties, you know. But I also didn't have him not in the top sixty-four. You know, I I thought he was. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised that dogs didn't make it in. It's not. Did he have any bad losses either? Like I feel like he didn't have anything bad on his resume at all. I, I he had a couple. He I also think. had. He had the win over Hydra, uh, and he beat everyone else that was thrown at him. I felt like I felt like he didn't have anything bad. All right. I could be wrong. Though. All right. So. I just want to. I just want like closing thoughts on all players, all and games. I want I want people to give me like a rough prediction of where they think they're gonna be, and I'll I'll just name them off as, as I go, and just say a number. I'm um, not giving any predictions because I know where everyone is. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean the people we have now for next year. Just oh, oh, okay, head, okay. In your head, okay, Stevie G. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go not ranked. Not ranked. Robert. Next year. Next year. Actually, uh, no. Steve, I, I, think think he'll, I think he'll be. I, I think he'll be on there. I think he'll be like. I think if he goes, 59. He's a guy that, he, he needs to go to events, but yeah, I think he'll be in the fifties. Yeah, yeah, like high fifties. All right, SKG. Like low fifties. Dark. Assuming he goes to events. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. that one. Yeah. Assuming he, might, he goes he to events. He might I'll be put off. him like. Yeah. I'll put him low fifties. Cheers. Low fifties, high forties. Low fifties. Me. Low forties. Unranked. You're not gonna be on. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna be. Okay. I'm not doing anything next year. <laughs> I'm not doing anything next year. I, you know what? I will make it a goal to play Dark Horse again, and then I'll retire like Finny and be like, oh yeah, there we go. So, but you can now, you can now put this in your Tinder profile that you're ranked. Smash player. Oh yeah, I can, I can. <laughs> all right, all right, Lorenzo. I, oh, I should say my unranked. opinion too. Yeah, unranked, 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 unranked. unranked you don't for sure. You don't... Well, you guys don't think he'll be ranked next? No, I don't no. think he'll go to. I, I either think he won't go to enough stuff, or he'll go to like one thing and he won't. Get, he won't do enough. I think even if he goes to enough things, I think even if he goes to I think if he goes to enough things, I think people are just ranking him because he's he plays DK. People just see he's a DK maid. Imagine if he played Pika, he'd be like the best player in the Warrior <laughs> level. So they just rank him really high on the assumption that he'd be really really good when it's you can't you people can't play these hypotheticals here if he's playing dk and he's getting dk results then he's a dk player you know like just give him the results that he gets i think a lot of people just look at a name and they look at a main and they go well but he, he gets bonus points for being a mario main he gets bonus points for being a link main like I, stop with the bonus points he, he did this he did that that's what he gets I, I don't think he's a bad player i just don't think he's gonna be ranked yeah uh, Mad Rush. Oh, I should say my opinion too. Like I said, Mad Rush unranked for sure. He, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Unranked. Well, I don't know. So, I don't know how he made it on the ranks. He race. might. He <laughs> might keep solid again. But I'll put, I think I'll put him down in the low sixties. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put him in the sixties. Sure. Hydra. If he somehow, if he made it with these losses, like he's. <laughs> Hydra, I think it's going to be a forties, thirties player next year. Expired. Yeah, I, I think low fifties. Low fifties. Low fifties. Yeah, fifties. High forties. Yeah, fifties. Fifties. All right. Fifties. High forties. Uh, Daniel, I don't feel much change or either low, lower. 
Yeah, uh, right. I think he's gonna be going to college. I think he's going to be able to go to stuff. I think he's going to be. Uh, I think he's going to be. I think he's right where he is. I think he stays right where he is. Yeah, I think he stays. All right, Finio. Just uh, non -ranked. non non ranked. No, I think I think he's going to come out of retirement. He's going to go to things. I think he's going to be low fifties. Unranked. Yeah. Either high 50s, 60s, or unranked. I know we all agree on this one, so we can just say yeah, it again. Nintendo, yeah, no. Nintendo, unranked. 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 He's gone. Yeah, Please. unranked. Yeah. He's gone for sure. No well, idea. If he goes how he to made stuff, it. I put him in the 60s. <laughs> all right, last but not least, right. Horvy. I, I think he moves he'll, up. I think he'll still be in the Yeah, field. low 50s. All right. 50. I think, yeah, low 50s. I think he moves up to the low 50s. I think the low 50s right now are going to be all the people we just talked about. Next year, you know. Yeah, and then the yeah. '60s will be like, like. And the '60s will be some people, random people. Commerce. Dogs Johnson will you know, finally make it. The Dogs Johnson, be the 60s. Rachu, Quaffin. if Rachu just back throws, he'll make it. Oh yeah, with the bat, <laughs> he yeah. just back throws. Yeah, let's so let's talk about as final discussion. Last thing to wrap it up, let's talk about people you think can replace these spots. Who's gonna be here next year? Who do you think is gonna oh, make no, their debuts? Not including the honorable mentions. Yeah, not including honorable mentions. Uh, Quapples, Raichu, uh, Protagonist, um... Does Protag still, like, play? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, he like, he's stopped he's, for a while. Fun yeah, fact. He's, he's actually, I think he's been motivated to get actually really active recently. Yeah. Like, he's, he's really motivated now. So, fun fact, um, Protagonist was number 69. Nice. That, that's oh, yeah, the yeah. legacy. The honorable, honorable mention. Uh, I think. Let me try to think of. I don't. I don't, I don't see Protagonist making on here, at least from from what I've known. If, I if, just he, gets, if he gets I just way more, so I see like some of these guys. Of on there. Um. So I I could see I could see Protagonist making it. I could see Master Handjob making it if he goes to stuff. Is Young Koi on it this year? I could see him on it. Um. Year. Mm, yeah, he is. <laughs> okay. Um. If if he was able to travel to stuff, I could see even like Daniels getting on there. But he's, he's oh just, yeah, I actually wouldn't be surprised if he made it in this year. But it's I just health, don't though. think it, yeah. it all. Yeah, it all comes down to that. I could see Indefa. Yeah, yeah if he Death goes. Indefa is actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Death CPO. He's, he's I think Death CPO can get on. Oh yeah, Death CPO. Death CPO and Phil. I think one of them will get good. I don't know which of them it'll be, but I think um, I if think he goes one to of things, those two will get good. if he goes to things, EG will make the rankings. Yep, I agree. EG for rankings next year. Nobody Same from with, Ohio. Nobody for a while. Yo, what oh, happened? Caleb. Caleb, I have to throw in that mix of Death CPO and Phil. Yeah, Caleb, Caleb. Caleb's one of those three is one of those three is gonna. Oh yeah, I forgot about Caleb. Caleb is actually pretty good. But he, he needs to get his parents to chaperone him. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. I think Phil. I, he seems really young too. I don't know what's going on with those guys, but those three Pikas are all promising. One of them. One of them should be. I um. I just want to bring his name out because I remember he was a hidden boss. What happened to Vin Sani? Does any Midwest people in the chat need to tell us where that man is? He's just, he's just. Oh, uh, he went to MVP Moms and that was it. Yeah, after he scored all of Moms' points at MVP Moms, he retired. <laughs> <laughs> no, EG. EG. Yeah, I was, I was exaggerating. I guess he was just like. Vin, half, Vin, half Vin, Vin, Vinny could be really good if he went to stuff and he, and he like took some really serious time playing the game. He's a smart player. And he's got really good control, and he's got good vision for the game, and good fundamentals. He just doesn't go to stuff, so like things catch him off guard, you know, like not refined in you know some matchup knowledge. Uh, I think if he went to a lot of stuff and he was as active as the other Ohio players or the other like Midwest players, I think he would be. I think he would make the rankings. I really do. I think he he, he could make the rankings. I don't know if that'll happen because he's he's gone. I want to say someone who I want to see on here and hopefully hire is Frey. Frey has the ability and the talent to be like a 20s player. I, I Dude, one of my favorite that. sets of the entire year is still Frey in court. Frey is so good. It's just... Uh, he's very good. He's extremely but good. I don't, I, he's he very didn't smart, that too. On console. He's, a, he's generally so, a very smart player. Robert, so. Robert, if you had seen him like Thursday night before Gommel, he looked terrible. And then he got so much better so quickly adjusting. Like, he destroyed court. Yeah, but then like, he lost to you badly. <laughs> yeah, and then he just kept walking into my up tilt. So like, he beats me online. So he's I, 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 he definitely has the skill. But yeah, dude, but, if he if he plays more console, he's he's really good. It seems like a big if to me. He's, I, he's I don't 20s. know. He has to transfer and he has to yeah 
actually go to events and because he's a, I'm he's pretty teams. sure I know Lowe's in here. I'm sure Lowe can attest that Frey is like a 20s player for sure. I don't, I don't know about 20s this year. Seems pretty competitive. Well, well not this year. Maybe next. Year. I, I don't he's think he's not a that 20s much player. better than me. I don't think he's a 20s player. No, um, but he's very good. Just just knowing what the list looks like, I don't yeah, think. No, so. no, 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 not a 20s, but he's very good. But, but, um. Fun fact, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say the exact date, but Gommel is gonna be announced soon, so it is happening. So yeah, they tweeted about that. So. Get excited. Um and Frey, you should go to Gommel. Yeah, go to Gommel Frey. Also, uh since we're wrapping it up, anybody that has Twitter, seriously right now, go tweet at Smashboards and give them crap for tweeting out PGR videos and not sixty four rankings videos. Who follows Smashboards? <laughs> I don't know. They follow me, so I get stuff from them. I didn't know Smashboards still existed. I'm really, I'm really, I have to say, as we wrap this up, I I'm thought they banned everyone. Oh, yeah. Hey, Robert, can I, <laughs> when are you going to let me view your tweets? Who's asking? <laughs> no, no, uh, it's, it's Dark Horse. Dark Horse. Am I ever going to be able to see your tweets? I, I can uh, see them. There, there's some hot, juicy stuff. Oh, yeah, stuff yeah. I was going to say, out. I think Supa already, I already let Supa. Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably not. Oh man, you're missing out on some great <laughs> stuff. I, I'm his, trying to get to 100 his, his follower His last quests. five tweets, Dark Horse, are a wow, Dark Horse is so bad, can't believe I'm commentating with him. I'm trying to get to 100 requests. <laughs> After I get over that, maybe I'll I'll start looking back through and accept some people. But um, very very. Bro, I was just mad because I beat him the last time we played. Help me reach 100 follower requests, please follow me on Twitter. <laughs> very very final thing I want to say, I'm. Very excited for next tomorrow's rankings. I have no idea what they're going to be, and I can't wait to talk about them. So are we doing? Do we doing this again? Oh yeah, we're going to do this again. Uh, I'm not going to be available. I'm not going to be available tomorrow. Dark right, Horse. The volume, the volume will lose fifty percent, but I don't I'll try and make up for it. And... I might be around. Might be around. Okay. We, we we might bring in some other people. I know we have Jam Jar and like Preston. I'm sure there's some other. Do we get Jam Jar on here? It's his. Yeah, it's his belt. We definitely. We'll probably Preston try and get Jam awesome. Jar. Yeah. Low, someone buy him a microphone. Yeah, low, please. low, freaking just use your phone or something. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Shoot it while piloting a prop plane. Yeah, I'm piloting a prop plane. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> All right, so I think it's that's gonna wrap us up for tonight. Uh, be sure to check in around eight or nine, and you know, get excited because like I literally have no clue what it's gonna be, and I'm I'm sure to have a lot of words to say about it. So. I'll see everyone around. Thanks for coming around, Dark. Cheers, Robert. All right, good night, guys. Later. Yeah. See ya. See ya.